Hello, James here from Cobra Engineering. We're going to start tonight by talking about the cooling system on Terminator and most other Cobras are very similar. So to start off, I'd like to talk about the cooling crossover pipe. Everybody's familiar with this ugly piece of metal that the Ford did. A lot of people don't realize that they're split. There's two O-rings here. And that's the design, so they had a room for the tolerance differences between the heads and they could fit it on any engine no matter when it was manufactured or if there was any difference between these. I always recommend replacing the factory uh, fill point with a stainless one. The factory ones rust, they get awful. Now, a lot of people don't realize why this is up here. This is much higher than the degas tank where your radiator cap is. If you fill the radiator cap, you're not going to get all the air out of the system. So you got to take this out, and what I prefer to do is I get a funnel that fits in there nice and tight, and I add coolant while the engine's running. You know, you fill it up initially, and then you get it running, and you add coolant until it sits about halfway up in the funnel, and you wait, and it goes down, and you wait, and it goes down while it's running, until you're just, it's not doing anything anymore. Shut it off, you're putting the car away for the night. Fill this funnel up, bring it almost like half inch from the top. Don't even worry about it, you're gonna leak a little bit. Not a big deal, try to screw it in there, get it in there tight. Who cares, put a rag under it if you really care. But that's gonna work its way down overnight. As the engine cools, it's gonna draw it down. Ideally, three nights in a row. You're literally gonna drive the car that day Come home, it's going to cool off first before you pull that plug out, obviously. And you're going to pull that out, you're going to put that funnel in, and you're going to fill that, and you'll let it sit overnight. If, like, the next night it didn't go down maybe a half inch or a quarter inch, you're probably good. But if it went down almost all the way again, do it again the next night. Get the air out of the system. A lot of people don't realize you've got rough cast inside the head and inside the water jackets in the engine. If you get little air bubbles on there, that is not pulling the heat out of the engine. That water's running right over them air bubbles and it's like a layer of insulation. Got to get the air out of the system. That's why it's important to always run at least some antifreeze or a water wetter to break that uh, uh, surface tension of the water. You can't just run straight water in an engine. Even if you're at the racetrack and they say straight water, you put a little water wetter in there and it's not going to matter as far as that's concerned. It's so diluted. It's not like 50-50 mixture. But everybody loves this cooling crossover. It's always in the way. It's cumbersome. You can see I didn't even put a blower on here because it would be hard to show. So then we're going to move on to what everyone wants to see. This is the cooling crossover parts that Cobra Engineering makes. And we're going to sit here and I'm going to show you. So they're going to come with a thermostat installed. No, the early ones didn't. I got to deal with Mazira now. 170 is usually what I recommend. Yes, that's a little cool, but you got to remember that you're moving your thermostat housing away from the engine. It's going to take a little while. That's going to cool off a little more. So you're going to want it to open easier. Now, they come with a bolt. Lock tight it in one hole. That never comes out. It's marked with, I put a little black marker on the inside of the head. And when you get them, there's a sticker marking which bolt it is. You should, when you get these now with the thermostat in them, you shouldn't have to take it apart. That's ready to install. Now that bolt is very simple. There's one hole that is not threaded. So you see the three bypasses? And the three bypasses in here. That's to guarantee you line those up and don't mess that up. Kind of idiot proof. We all love that because I don't care how smart you are, we've all played the idiot at once in our life. So you just basically don't have to be a superhero, it's just a silicone o ring that seals it. Now you put the other ones in, obviously. And they're going to come with this most inch and a half barb and then I have also 
dash 16, dash 20. Uh, you could go inch and three quarter, but the upper radiator holes from the factory is inch and a half. That's the same as that. So that'll come installed just, it'll come like this. Now on the back, there's a half inch NPT hole. Personally, I would take the cooling mod from the back, run that forward into here. Instead of recirculating it into the back of the water pump, even though it goes through the heater core first, you could argue that. But I would do this and block that heater core line. These do not come with any dope or any Teflon on them or anything, and they're NPT threads, so it's going to have to be sealed. You're not going to be able to just raw aluminum to raw aluminum and get that to seal. That's going to leak. They're just in there loose by hand when you get it. Same thing oh, right here with the one on the passenger side. I include the plug because most people aren't going to use it. But that is a 3 8 NPT. Same thing. Going to want to seal it. This one, as you see, is counterboard a little bit. That's for the uh, temp sensor. So... I got one here with old O-rings on it. And they are going to be hard to install with the O-rings. So oil the O-rings. Grease, oil, something on there. Make sure the bores are clean. 400 grit sandpaper, scotch Bright, something along that lines. You're going to want that to seal. A lot of trouble to get that in. You don't want it to leak and have to do it again. I'll send you more O-rings. That's fine. But these are good Teflon O-rings. Or nit nitrile, excuse me. You want to put them in there. As you can see, the temp sensor here is very tight to the bracket. So you're going to want to run that temp sensor in as deep as possible. Maybe even put the wiring harness plug on before you install it. Comes with two screws. Boom, boom. Obvious. Doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Comes with a, a number eight o-ring port plug same thing here's your fill point now you can put the the funnel in there you can do the exact same routine this is still higher than the decas tank although it is lower than the crossover tube it'll still serve its function it's still higher than the head any cooling jacket in the head you want to get the air out and this is just an o-ring so you don't torque isn't needed on o-ring ports to get them to seal the o-ring seals so all you really do is even by hand I can take just a regular allen like that boom sealed that's never going anywhere it's not gonna leak a little oil on that never hurts all o-rings could use a little bit of oil when installing as you see I put the these do not come with these fittings. I don't have any kind of special deal. You're just as well off getting them from Summit like I did. Jegs, whoever you prefer. So I got those on there. And then on the back of here, two more of the exact same fittings. And as you see, it's a tight package. It literally, those two hex heads are turning there's not much room I try to get this as tight as humanly possible and still be useful most people just mount this right here basically it's where the crossover would come maybe you have to cut the holes a little bit you can mount that right there like that and then you just got a 90 out to here on night usually a 90 out to here and a lot of people just run this out here and they run a 45 off of here to this one. It's all going to be tight. Everything's tight on these engines. We all know that. If you've been working on your car at all, you, all you understand. The intercooler manifold, that'll be another video for another day. I have a good solution for that and VMP has an even better solution. Alright, James here still. Mocked up. Basically a factory cooling system. This is a, would be a Terminator. For those that are uh, coming over from Alex SVT's page, this is his long block I've been working on. I just got to button up the timing gear, get the cams on, and hopefully you can get that Cobra going again. So basically, this factory system, we just put the crossover pipe in. This is called the bypass line. So what this does, it basically... 
the coolant doesn't go through the radiator. It goes through here, completely bypasses the thermostat, and goes right back into the engine. This gets the engine up to temp as quick as possible. It's all about emissions and it's good for engine life. Oil really wants to be 180, 200 degrees, basically 200 degrees for it to operate properly. So the idea with this is they get the engine up to temp, the thermostat opens. When it opens, it blocks this bypass off down here. There's a plunger in there. And then that coolant comes from the radiator and that the thermostat regulates that. This line here is what comes off the bottom of the degas tank. And this is a degas, it's not an overflow tank. There's a big difference. It also has a small one here that goes to the radiator. This is how the factory system, this is a factory, they call it an oil cooler. Arguably it's an oil warmer. <laughs> I'll pull this off now and then I can put on one of mine and, and you can see what the difference is. Now we see this piece would simply go uh, tape over that right here. I'll just throw a bolt in there quick. Mock it out a little bit. Now you see the inherent problem. If you keep the stock system like this, this hose doesn't get here. You're going to need a 90 degree hose of some kind. Mostly, if you just get one with a 190 degree bend, usually you can get that. This is an inch and a half. This is an inch and a half. That's what the factory oil cooler is. But you can see how small the opening is in there. Oops, still got a lot of oil in there. Here's inside the thermostat housing. You can see, it's very simple. The thermostat just has a plunger on it that closes off that bypass. Otherwise, it just uses the radiator. So when you're doing this setup with the thermostat and you're moving it to the top, what you're going to want to do is eliminate all of this. Now a lot of people are taking the thermostat housing and they're just capping off this, this part right here that comes down from the bypass. And then you can use the housing with no thermostat in it. Make sure you have an O-ring in there though or else it won't seal. I am working on a lower piece that's going to come along later. It's going to bring that all together and you'll be able to use just basically straight hoses. This has two 10 O-ring ports and it's labeled. One goes in the engine, one comes out. Very simple. Uh, if you run an external oil cooler, you have to run a thermostat, an oil thermostat. Oil can overcool and it will not function properly. You're going to have water in it. You may leave gas in it, whatever. Bring it up to temp. That's where it's engineered to function. So you have to make sure you got an oil thermostat if you're going to run an external oil cooler. Um, I like to run a large oil filter uh, with the external mount. I don't manufacture a mount because there's so many good ones out there. It's just redundant. Pick your favorite. I know uh, Peterson has a good one where you can put a drill on it and pump oil and build pressure if you park it for long periods of time. Um, a lot of, you know, nice setup. We'll probably cover that a little more so in a later video, but this is basically where the coolant goes in the engine. The water pump pulls it here and it uh, circulates and then it just forces it out the top. And then we get to the head cooling mod later. back of the engine. Oh, you can see this is where the heater core fitting would go. And knock this plug out and we equalize that cooling across here. Normally it returns to that lower the water pump in the back. Personally if I'm building a good engine myself I'm going to block that off and I'm going to run that up into this fitting that I put on this thermostat housing. I'm not going to run it back hot water into the back of the engine like that. That could easily be tapped to an NPT or even freeze plugged. I wouldn't want to freeze plug it as it's not real accessible. 
this is pretty much going to build a bulletproof cooling system. You equalize the cooling in the back of the heads. You go to what I would consider an old school cooling system up front. Eliminate this bypass system. Go to the heads. Oops, wrong way. Get cooling through the radiator. Run it right into the engine. Just make sure your engine's up to temp. The temperature is key. A cold engine is not a, a healthy engine. There's a factory water pump, stamped steel. This very well might be the one off of my car when I bought it new. There. Now, here's what I recommend, of course, is the EMP Stewart pump. It's very important to notice the difference in the bearing housing, how much bigger that is. This thing is substantially heavier. Has a nice solid impeller on there, designed to flow better. Comes with the O-ring, everything, super easy to install. Just pull the old one out, put the new one in. It's not, there's not much more to explain than that. That's just a much beefier, healthier piece that's not going to fail. And it's going to flow more water. If you drive your car on the street, I recommend running a mechanical pump. Everybody wants to go to an electric pump and remove their parasitic loss, but an electric water pump will not move water like this mechanical one will when you really need it to. It's fine for drag racing, for even real specific racing, where you can flip a switch, you can make it work the way you want, you can set it with your ECU, but when it comes to street driven cars, put a mechanical pump on it, move the water. Uh, you just you want to get the water flowing around that engine. You don't want to be pussyfooting around with some pump. And even, I know EMP makes some really badass electric bullet pumps. And we've run them on our race car before, but it's not going to do what this is going to do on a street car. These are all my ideas for a healthy cooling system. Keep your Terminator and your other Cobras running strong. Uh, like I said, if you got any other uh, good questions, we're going to do these videos about every other week, maybe every week. If you give me enough questions to answer, uh, contact me at james at cobratechtalk.com. You can email there. You could leave a comment below if you got any questions about what I covered here. Um, please come back and uh, let me know what I'm doing right, wrong, or indifferent. And, uh, of course, I recommend you go to cobraengineering.com and pick up some of my healthy products that I'm uh, pretty proud of. Uh, if you got any suggestions for products, there's you could email me there, james at cobraengineering.com. If uh, you got any good questions for this show specifically, james at cobratechtalk.com. Thank you, and I uh, hope I'll see you soon.